All right, it's time to begin your journey in mastering your camera. And it starts with this tutorial right here, right now about the fundamentals of your camera. This will be the foundation for every tutorial that follows in this camera masterclass. Regardless of your experience level, this tutorial is a must watch. I guarantee you will learn something new. Hello, my name is Chris Parker, and it is my desire to help you elevate your photographic skills to fulfill your creative vision. If you're ready to master your camera and create exceptional photos, let's do it. So the key ingredient for any photo you take is properly capturing the exposure. So what is exposure? Well, exposure is how bright or dark your image is. If it's too bright, then you have an overexposed image like this one. If it's too dark, then it's considered underexposed. And your goal is to capture a good exposure. And here it is for this image. And as you can see, it's not too bright or too dark. So how does exposure work? And how can you correctly expose your photos in camera to create awesome photos? Well, first, you have to understand, and I mean truly understand exposure to master it, and it starts with knowing the three camera settings that affect your exposure. Those three camera settings are your ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. So let's go over what each of those is right now. So ISO's job is to make your available light source brighter if needed, but how does ISO make your available light brighter? I'll let you know in just a second. First, you should know that your ISO comes in standard options like 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, and I think you get the idea. Now, those numbers were all we had in the days of shooting with film. In our current digital world, additional ISO numbers are now possible like 250, 320, and 500 to name a few. In essence, ISO is adjusted to ensure you have enough light to record your photo with the aperture and shutter speed required for your creative vision. And it starts with your camera's sensor. Now, since unlike the days of film, your sensor is not sensitive to light. Instead, it makes available light brighter by amplifying it. Now, the downside to amplifying the light is the dreaded digital noise associated with a higher ISO. The higher the ISO used, the more digital noise your image will have. So let's look at a couple of images to see what the digital noise looks like. So this image here was shot at an ISO of 100 and doesn't have any digital noise. I retook this setup again with an ISO of 12,800 and you can now see the digital noise that looks like specs or grain which degrades the image. Now, the question is what ISO settings should you use and when? That's a great question. And you will learn that in an upcoming tutorial. First, let's discover what an aperture is. So the aperture controls how much light enters your lens and is passed into your camera. And an aperture is a fancy name for, wait for it, a hole. Yes. The aperture is nothing more than a hole in your lens. You can change the size of the hole to allow more or less light to pass into the camera based on the exposure you need. So the size of your aperture is designated with what is known as an F number like F2.8, F4, and F5.6 to name a few. And you'll learn more about those numbers in an upcoming tutorial. First, Let's take a look at two images I took to demonstrate how the aperture affects your exposure. So for this image, I set the aperture to f1.4, which is, by the way, the biggest hole for this lens. And with it, I achieved a good exposure. Then I retook this photo again with the smallest aperture size for this lens, which is f16. And I kept the same shutter speed and ISO used in the first one. The result is an underexposed image since less light traveled to the sensor. Now, if you're wondering how F1.4 is bigger than F16, 
hold that thought. You'll discover why that is in an upcoming tutorial, and you'll also learn the creative side to Aperture, so stay tuned. First, you need to discover what shutter speed is and how it relates to your exposure. The shutter speed is your final key to getting the proper exposure. In essence, a shutter blocks the camera's sensor until you press the shutter release button. When you do, the shutter opens and allows the light coming through your lens to be recorded by your sensor. So you can control how long that shutter stays open based on your creative vision and the amount of light needed to create that image. So the key to controlling how long the shutter stays open is, well, time itself, hence the term shutter speed. All right, so you can set how long the shutter stays open in seconds or fractions of a second. So I set my camera here to a shutter speed of six seconds and listen when I click. So the shutter is now open and light is being recorded by the sensor. Wait for it. And that was the sound of the shutter closing. Now I'm going to change the shutter speed to one two thousandths of a second and listen when I click this time. So much faster than six seconds. So here is an image that I had to use a shutter speed of 30 seconds to get a good exposure. And here it is again with the same ISO and aperture, but this time I set the shutter speed to six seconds, which resulted in an underexposed image. Now there is more to your shutter speed than just getting the right exposure and that is, just like with your aperture, it provides creative options too. Before we get into that, let's take a deep dive into ISO to discover what ISO number to use and when, plus much more. So if you're ready to elevate your photographic skills, click right there to get started.